So iCode is a system that is basically an ocular typewriter. Uh, it's a system that records, well, it just records video of one's eyes, really. Um, it just kind of isolates video, video of small videos of one's eyes as one looks at it. A way that I like to describe it, which I think frames it in a different, in a more poetic context, is that it, it's, a, it's an image which is wholly constructed from its own history of being viewed. And it's, it's wholly constructed from its own history of being viewed by showing the eyes of the people who are watching it. And when one comes up to it and watches it, one is watching the watching of the people who were watching before. And as one does so, one enters one's own watching into it. There I am. Okay. So my current cursor position is here. Every time I blink, records a new pair of eyes into the system. It's a, um, it's a system which is recording short videos of my eyes as I look at it. And every time I blink, it, it creates a, an edit. Um, so blink, blink, blink. And you can see that's the sort of cursor point where it blinks blue like that. Um, it's going back and forth in this kind of back and forth writing system. Right now it's, it's entering these things into the, uh, the text this, in this direction. Eventually, if I were to keep doing this, I'd fill in the whole page and start again from the top. You can see all the different um, people who've been here before in the last few hours or so. So, just talk a little bit about what's going on. Uh, before you can find the eyes, you have to find the face. And so, in, in this part of the scene here, I'm running the standard OpenCV uh, Viola Jones face tracker uses wavelets, the Haar wavelets, and it's a very well-known tool in media arts, and it's, actually, it's basically the face tracker which is used in all of your typical consumer devices. And once we find the face, then we can begin to look for the eyes. To speed up the face tracking, I, I, uh, I make a guess for where to search for the face based on where it was previously. So rather than searching the whole frame for the face, which is quite slow actually, um, I just search this kind of expanded green region. So the, the blue is where it was previously, and the red is where it was previously, and then I just basically say, okay, give a certain region around there. You can't have moved that much in, in a thirtieth of a second. So, so only search for a face in that smaller zone. That saves me some cycles. Gets better performance. So here's the face. I make a guess where the eyes are. And in fact, I actually have hard wavelets that try and find the eyes, but they're frequently wrong. So I use a couple other techniques to try and find the eyes, and I combine those for a best guess. And once I have those, I use those to try and basically, I, that's, those are my recording regions. Um, now, what I do then is I measure the amount of motion that happens right in those areas. And this graph here shows that amount of motion. And as you can see, it's correlated with my blinking. So that basically what blinking is, is motion in the area where the eyes are. And when that blinking motion is above a certain threshold, then I say, ah, that's an edit, that's a blink. And that's how I determine how to go to the next scene. The small aspect of that piece that I like is that it goes back and forth according to um, the Greek writing technique uh, called boustrophodon, which is as the ox plows. And it turns out the ancient Greeks would, would write from, from left to right, as we do, but then reverse their writing and go from right to left, writing backwards and with backward shaped letters until they hit the left edge and then start again. Uh, and so that's how the, the, the I code piece works. It just kind of goes back and forth endlessly.